네, 감사합니다. 여러분께 네덜란드의 상황을 수소 산업에 대한 상황을 말씀드리고요. 네덜란드의 기본 목표는 올 일렉트릭 그리고 지역 난방이었습니다. 그런데 여기에 조금 방향 수정 On the top level is the energy supply in the Netherlands itself, but on the bottom side, this is our import. If you look to the demand, on the right side, this is what we use ourselves, and this is our export. And it is easy to see that energy for the Netherlands is extremely important. We import a lot of energy and we sell a lot of energy. And that's because we have some main ports feeding energy into Europe. Um, so energy is not only something we use, but it's one of our main pillars in our, in our economy. So the direction of the energy transition is of big interest for our economy and also the direction of other countries in Europe. They are very important for us. Um, the ambition of the Netherlands when it comes to the footprint of carbon dioxide, uh, the Netherlands is not performing very well. We are at place 34 and the footprint currently is around 10 tons per person per year, where the goal for 2050 is to go back to one. That means in numbers that where the current footprint is 9.6, the budget is one. We have to reduce 8.6 out of the 9.6, which is a huge effort. Um, when you look to the, energy, the um, carbon footprint in houses, that's around 2.2. That means that if we are able to, um, to reduce energy and make it 100% renewable uh, in the houses, we only did one quarter of our target. So in industry, mobility, and all the other sectors, we have to reduce an order of 6.8. So this is a little bit our, um, our challenge. Well, as I said, the first direction of the Netherlands has been to go to all electric. And the idea was that there is an uh, enormous supply of energy coming from the sun and, and also uh, through wind. So the basic idea to go to um, those renewable sources is not a strange idea. The problem, however, is that uh, especially heat demand uh, in our northern area where we are, uh, the heat demand is large when the solar input is very small. And at summer when the input is high, the demand is extremely low. Um, so. And this is, this is for heating buildings, but you can see the same effect when it comes to industry, to all kinds of sectors, that the demand is at a different moment than the supply. So we said in the Netherlands, and that's currently the conclusion of the energy transition, that demand and supply, that is our real problem. Sustainable demand and supply, and not electrification. Electrification is not an answer. Electrification is just an energy carrier system. So when you look to the energy system, uh, consisting out of three blocks, basically energy sources, a transport system and usage for 2050, what we want to do is to get rid of the fossil fuels. And that means that we will have sources that are not reliable, that we can't control, and that we have an issue in balancing the grid, the transport to the users. And the only way to solve that problem is to incorporate a large storage into the transport system. Well, I think all of you know the graphs like this, eh? how we can store energy in general, um, all kinds of technologies are given here, like batteries, uh, like uh, lakes that are pumped up, 
uh, flying wheels, whatever. The problem with these graphs is that they are logarithmic. So each step is a factor 10 bigger than the previous step. Um, and it has been very difficult for our politicians to understand what is our potential to store energy. So to explain that, we have made, made this graph completely linear and then it, the real potential is shown. We need to store energy in large quantities in the Netherlands for long periods. And that means that we are in the right upper corner of the graph. And there are a few technologies. As, and uh, uh, hydrogen is just one of them, H2 over here. But what if you make this graph linear, then the real potential is shown. So this is in real numbers. And this is why there is such an interest in the Netherlands on hydrogen in the last two years. Everybody came to the awareness that we need a storage system and that H2 hydrogen by far is the most favorite solution to get there. So we made a small um, brain exercise, as you can call it. What if we switch the Netherlands to 100% hydrogen today? And what if we would produce that hydrogen only with solar PV? Just to give an impression of how much we need. Um, and um, we found out that we need the surface of one province, being the southern Holland, that is an area over here, an area like this. Our whole country is roughly this area eh, over here. We need the surface like this to supply the Netherlands with hydrogen for 100% of the demand. But it's not realistic to do that in a very dense uh, populated country as the Netherlands. So one step further, what if you do this in the desert? Uh, we need an area of 50 by 60 kilometers producing over 3000 petajoules. And this is the, currently the idea to go to other places in the world close to the uh, equator to produce hydrogen on solar energy and bring it by ship to the country, to our main ports. And we have seen that our ports are extremely important for our economy. So currently hydrogen is seen as a way to go in a new area using hydrogen as energy carrier, but also being part of our economy because we have the main ports of Europe. Um, the current development is that we are building, uh, based on the current gas grid of the Netherlands, which is shown over here. This is our natural gas grid with a penetration rate of 95%, which means that 95% of our buildings and houses have a connection to our natural gas grid, which is extremely dense. Um, based on that gas grid, we are building a hydrogen backbone through the Netherlands. So it's basically a large pipeline covering all the areas and connecting our main ports with each other and connecting them to the other countries in Europe. So this will give us entrance to hydrogen for ourselves, but also it, it, uh, enforces the potential for our hydrogen economy. Um, this is an example or a picture of uh, one of our big gas facilities in the northern part of the country. And this is uh, Zuidwende, as it is called. In the past, um, salt is being uh, mined here. So we have large caverns under the ground. Um, so big voids that currently are being used to store natural gas. Now the first void is being transferred into hydrogen. So not only we will have a large transport system, but we will have large storage capacity as well in our gas grid. Well, all this uh, resulted in a very big momentum that's currently happening in the Netherlands. Many, many companies are entering the hydrogen environment are working on hydrogen, are developing technology, are producing hydrogen. So the result of this was, 
was that on April 7th, so last week, uh, more than 80 cost factor companies have offered their hydrogen ideas and commitments to the government uh, with a strong request to develop the hydrogen economy and move into the next yeah, century of energy, as I would say. So a lot of momentum, a lot is happening and uh, exciting times for hydrogen. So what I can do, I, I, I'm... I was wondering on how to make a connection with uh, the members of today in South Korea. Uh, if there is any interest to connect to companies in the Netherlands, please let me know through uh, the, your organization and uh, we can see how we can uh, facilitate it. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, for the opportunity to share this with you. Thank you very much.